Hi, welcome to another episode with our good friend, Ruth Easterling, talking about habits on Leadership Synergized. I'm Kevin Smith, and I appreciate you so much joining in. And what a great session we had last week with Ruth and the value she brought through her experiences, her business and where it's growing in, through, and beyond, and the opportunities that you have, I have, to gain through her knowledge and expertise. Ruth, thank you again for joining us. And, you know, where we left off last time, we were talking about habits and being purposeful to make that change. And sometimes my experience in life is, at least looking at myself in a mirror, I've not really been successful in changing my habits because I looked at it as such a large task. Talk a bit about your experiences. How can we break those tasks down to where it seems more manageable in the moment? Yeah, Kevin, one of the things that I've recognized with myself and with my clients is that the problem we have with habits is that we bite off more than we can chew, right? Mm. So I do every December, I do a class on the vision board, okay? So Mm. we put together a vision board. We think about, okay, what kind of habits do we want to start in the new year, right? Everyone does that. But the problem is that I almost feel like everyone's doomed to before they start because in January, people just start these habits and then they're done in two weeks. And the problem is that everybody picks up the biggest, they bite off like, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. And they just start with these large habits that really what we need to do is we need to start with a small idea and a small habit that if we did it every single day, it would change. And then we can grow it, shall we say, to a bigger habit. So one of the things that a lot of people do is, yeah, they say, I'm going to be, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. Okay. Most of us, what we need to say is I, the end goal is to lose 10 pounds. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to get up every morning and I'm going to put on my running shoes. And because I live in Seattle, I'm either going to walk or I can run for a very short period of time. So maybe 10 minutes or 15 or 20, whatever it is. And then you begin to say, okay, I'm not going to do it every day, seven days a week. No, I'm going to do it three times a week. So I'm going to do it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday or whatever. You make that little shift. Okay. So when you begin to make little shifts, it begins to change you. All right. And I like to use the illustration of an airplane that takes off from Los Angeles. Now, all an airplane would have to do is to change their radius well, on airplanes, as many of us know, is that when the airplane takes off into the air, the pilot sets what direction they're going and at this radius of which way they're going. So from Los Angeles to New York City, they'd be going on this one radius. So let's just say that the pilot says, it's not that big of a deal. So I'm just going to change it 1%. Okay. So just, we're going to be off a little 1% and we'll just see where we get. So they just change it one little percent. So you would think that when they get to New York city, they would just be off a little bit. No, the truth of the matter is that if they're off by 1%, they end up in Delaware. And that is a huge difference. And so this is what happens to us. So when we decide to make a small minor shift, a small little tiny habit, an atomic habit, which James Clear calls it, is when we make that shift, it changes our life. So thanks, Kevin. No, great story. Great example. What I think I'm hearing you say is when I'm having a piece of chocolate, if I want to change, instead of eating the whole piece, maybe start by just devouring half and work my way down to not having any. Right. And that's a big problem with people and their whole quote unquote weight loss is that they begin to say, oh, I'm not, I'm going to cut off, cut out chocolate altogether. I'm terrible at it. No, that's not going to help you because for somebody that has eaten chocolate on a regular basis, every single day, taking it and going cold Turkey usually gets you nowhere. <laughs> so. so let's build on that a little bit. My next question, and it jumped out right there with the, with your example, is the environment we're in, the environment we put ourselves in, we surround ourselves with, plays such a key part in our ability to identify the habits we need to change or want to change, and then a plan to go forward with that piece. Talk about your experience with the environment. Yeah, 
so one of the things that I know, like when it comes to food and Kevin and I have talked about this often is that if you decide, okay, I'm going to quit eating junk food. Okay. Now you can't actually do that. If you tell yourself, I'm not going to McDonald's on my way home from work. Right. And for a lot of people that actually can work. So that can be like a small habit that you change and you can actually do it. One of the other things that you can do is to change your environment where you don't buy chips or you don't buy pop. I know that for myself, that makes a huge difference for me. Cause I know that sometimes I get into this habit of drinking diet Coke and it's a really bad habit. <laughs> it's like, why do I do that? Every summer I just like go out and buy diet Coke. It's like, oh, it's summer. It's time for, <laughs> it's time for my diet Coke. Right. And it's like, no, I don't need to do that. But one of the things that I can do is just not buy it. And then I won't drink it. So change your environment. You can change your life. Thank you, Ruth. Ruth, through your experience, what would you say the top two or three, three obstacles are to allow us to develop poorer habits maybe than what we ever intended? Said another way, why do we go on the poorer habit side at times as humans and as leaders? Well, I think one of the things is that my nature, we all are kind of negative. And so we all also are very lazy. That's not, none of us are exempt from this. Okay. It's just our nature is to try to do things the easiest way possible. And so when, you know, by default, we're just going to do that. And it's not because we're horrible people, but we all do it. And so no one's exempt, but what we do is that the first thing that we want to do is the easiest thing. And so I find this over and over again, is that when people start to try to change some habits that they're doing or add habits, right? You don't always have to do negative ones, right? You can, the best is to try to add good things into your life is that when they try and do that, it becomes hard. And so the best thing to do to, when it becomes hard is just face it forward, keep your head down and go for it, right? Just like they tell you in, in athletic stuff. Unfortunately, what we do is we go, I can't do it. I'm just, I'm lazy or whatever excuse we have. And then we quit. Well, sometimes we, to your point, we see, and I know I have, we see that we have so much on our plate. We've allowed to get to our plate. Now we've talked in the earlier episode about how can we keep the main thing, the main thing, and not allow so many different things to get there type of aspect, which is very important, but sometimes you just kind of feel overwhelmed with life as well, right? So we may take a shortcut. I know I have. Yeah, yeah, we do. And I think that's where we have to continue to prioritize our habits. Okay, so one of the things that I highly recommend to all of my clients is that they have a day timer or some way to mark what they're doing. They can use a journal, day timer, whatever. And one of the things that I always suggest is that they decide what positive habits they want to add to their lives. Now, one of the things that a lot of people have to do is they have to learn to prioritize, right? And so one of the things I know like for myself that I, over the last probably two years that I've started doing is every night the, when I finish my work and I fin finish my day about nine o'clock every night is I, I call it review the days, my RTDs. And so at nine o'clock at night, I sit down with my journal and I begin to think through the habits that I have and the other things that I did in the day. And I assess my day. And so one of the things that I always recommend to people is that you have some kind of a way to write out what's going on. You can use your computer, you can use your phone, but I like pen and, and paper. So I just do better with pen and paper. And so I have a journal and I write out what I've done for the day and how did it go? And so that is a habit that I have developed. And so with my clients, I always recommend that they write out what habits they want to add to their life, put it in their day timer and schedule it to, so that they do it. Ruth, the word you used in one of our earlier segments, I think the first episode last week was around taking habits and turning into routine. Some individuals I know will say, I don't want to be a routine person. That's too boring in life. Expand a little bit because I think I, I clearly understand when you say routine, you're not talking about the boredom piece. It's about focusing again on a habit that helps you along your path of purpose. 
Yeah, I'm glad you said that, Kevin, because a lot of our personality goes into this. Now, I am a, on a DISC personality profile, I am an I. Now there's a D I S C. I love people and I do not like the same thing the same way every day. Okay. So if you look at my calendar, you will know I do not do the same thing the same way every day. Although I just told you a habit that I do. I do have <laughs> these routines and these habits that I do, but they're not the same. I change them up all the time. But one thing that I've learned, and again, I'll reference James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, and he talks about the brain. As human beings, we need to have routines in our lives. You think about your kids, if you have kids. When we go back to school, I love September. I always love September, because guess what? We go back to routine. And if we go to routine, my kids do better. I do better. Why? Because routine means we get up the same time every day. We go to school, we have lunch and dinner. We have the same kind of routine every single day. Now, like at my house, is it, do we do it every single thing the same exact way? No, never. Every day looks a little bit different, but that routine keeps us going. And so as human beings, we need routine, right? Does that mean it has to be exactly the same? Nope. But it needs, there needs to be something because our brain needs routine. And when we begin to have this routine in our lives, then we can begin to, in a sense, multitask. And I don't want to mean like, now we can do 20 more things at a time better, but what ha begins to happen is that we are able to transition and we can do one thing over here and then the other thing can we can continue to do another thing over here if that makes sense so we can do actually do two things at one time because one thing's routine and the other thing we're adding it in i hope that makes sense kevin yeah very much so uh, i will correlate again i don't know why it went to food the last episode but it's sticking there but if you're looking at maybe a, improving a diet perhaps it's including more vegetables so to speak in the menu or it's putting vegetables on your plate to begin with, more vegetables than maybe the sweet aspect. But here's an example. My wife and I have reached a point where we're empty nesters at home and we just don't eat the large portions we used to, but yet we're still buying two meals. That's routine. We've always ordered a meal for her and a meal for me. And we've been challenged on trying to change. Let's just get one meal, split it because we're full when we eat half of it anyways. And that, to your point, I think is what I would say the routine actually is in that regard going forward. Just changing that routine to where it really helps you in your end objective in that regard. Right, right, right. And I think that's why it's so important that we understand what are our habits that have become routines. Because that's what we wanted to do, right? Is that we want this, whatever we're trying to get done, we're trying to get it done to make it into a routine so that we can see it where we don't even have to think about it anymore. It just kind of happens. It glows. There you go. Before we go, and I know we have to wrap up here, what's a habit you're working on now? What's at the top of your habit change list? <laughs> wow, Kevin, thanks for asking. Right now, I'm trying to start a habit with my, with my work, with my coaching, is just to get in front of other people on a regular basis, like I'm just trying every Monday through Thursday, just trying to get myself out there and in front of people because I tend to not do that. And so I actually have a routine where I'm responding to people on Facebook and LinkedIn at the same time every single day, Monday through Thursday, because I just, oh, I'm going to do it, never get to it. And so it's, it has to become a habit. And it's on purpose L3, right? Right. <laughs> and purpose. it's Ruth Easterling. She's there to help you build habits. That will help you serve, become a better leader, and to further develop your leadership toolbox. Ruth, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for taking part. Great words of wisdom. And I know someone out there is benefiting from the time you've spent with us these past two weeks. Yeah, thank you, Kim. I really appreciate the chance to share and to talk with you. And if there is anyone who's listening that you want to continue to grow in your leadership abilities and in your understanding of who you are, and how your personal life impacts your professional life, I would love to talk to you. So thank you. Thank you, Ruth.
This All has right. been another episode of Leadership Synergize. Hopefully you've picked up something that will help you in the habit area. Ruth and I are available for you. And don't forget, overall, we can lead through still. We can lead beyond still. Doesn't mean we have to stand still. We can move forward, serving self, serving others, taking a habit that's not working for ourselves, and turning it into one that works well for others. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. I appreciate you. Bye.